tuning in to part two of our breast cancer awareness video. We're going to get right into it. Now, I've heard that chemotherapy can cause other conditions. Have you experienced this? Yes. Um, through the after years of getting chemotherapy, I've developed uh, a thyroid problem. So I have a, I have a see an endocrinologist to get pre treatment for that. Um, I've um, also developed neuropathy in my feet and my hands. Um, and the neuropathy was severe when my second occurrence of cancer happened in my spine. The treatment that I was taking was uh, a little too strong and um, I was in a wheelchair. And um, so I had to stop that treatment. Um, so I've developed the neuropathy in my hands and feet. The neuropathy causes you to lose like uh, feeling sometimes. So um, I can't grasp and feel things like a penny or something all the time. And on my feet, sometimes I can't um, feel the ground. I think I'm walking, okay. but I can't feel the ground. So um, that's something I, I did get during my treatment. Does it ever cause you to lose muscle? Yes, the chemotherapy also um, uh, caused me to have um, muscle problems. So um, my, I have leg weakness in my muscles. And um, so my balance may be a little off sometimes and uh, I may feel like I'm drunk, but <laughs> haven't taken a drink, but um, you learn how to deal with these things and um, um, get um, physical therapy for them. And you, you push on with your life. Uh, also, I think I mentioned I had a thyroid problem mm -hmm. that uh, I got during chemotherapy. and. Um, I just move on. And with your chemotherapy, did you have to get a mastectomy? And if so, how did that affect you as a woman? Yes, I got a mastectomy on the, on the left side. So um, I had that left breast removed. And um, as, as of now, I have a prosthetic on the left side. And um, also, you know, women need to know that you can uh, go through your insurance or if you have Medicare, and um, they, they will cover a prosthetic because a lot of people struggle with, you know, what do I do? Or you could go to, uh, if you're not insured, um, certain foundations like the National Cancer Society and uh, get a prosthetic for that side. As far as it affected me, as a woman, um, it did affect me mentally because that's a part of your womanhood, your breast. And so, and then the thoughts of uh, what does my husband think? You know, how does he feel about it? And, um, you know, even though he shared his feelings about it, you know, you still have a little doubt in your mind. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I feel less of a woman and, you know, I, I feel less attractive. So a lot of those thoughts go through a cancer patient's mind when they're um, dealing with getting a mastectomy. And um, uh, I think women just need to um, just push on and, you know, even seek treatment, you know, to make sure you're um, not overthinking the thought of losing the breast because, you know, you're still right. a whole person, you're still you. Right. When you're going through treatments, you can lose a lot, you know, um, you, your breast, you may have a double mastectomy, just, or even a lumpectomy where they take just a portion of the breast to remove the tumor. Um, sometimes it leaves uh, uh, some deformity in the breast that may get dense or something. Um, and also you may lose your hair because of the radiation treat, excuse me, the uh, uh, chemotherapy. Um, initially it uh, takes a little time, but your hair will start slowly falling out. And um, mine got up to a point where I um, had to make a decision because I'll, I'll be walking and you can see hair falling. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of mentally challenging uh, for a woman. You're just walking and your hair is just pulled out in lumps. So I made the decision to just go in um, and get it all shaved off so I can just get it done and over with. And uh, sometimes that may be a, a, a better way for women to cope with the hair loss. Just go ahead and, and remove it. And you know, that's your control of your hair because you feel like you're losing control. So I had that control to make that decision to just go ahead and shave the rest off. So my family joined me. We all went to MD Anderson and a lot of uh, cancer facilities, people don't know about that. They may have uh, barbers that help mm -hmm. you and they know how to um, cut your hair and be very sensitive about it. 
And um, cause it was a very emotional, it was a very emotional day when I went to get my hair cut. You know, I was fine, but my family was crying and you know, oh, okay. they, it, was, it affected them more than it affected me. Um, and so I just made that decision. And sometimes, you know, you can make that, that hard decision, but then, you know, kind of have fun with it. Cause like, you know, I can wear wigs and uh -huh. I can be a, you know, have long hair one day, short hair. This is a wig that I have on now, you know? So um, uh, sometimes you have to uh, embrace what's happening and just, right. just deal with it in a positive way. And, and just, you know, it, it is what it is. It's part of the treatment process. It had to be done. The treatment has to be done. So those are things that's gonna happen. So although you may lose some things, you're still a whole woman. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. You're still a whole woman, and um, you just gotta try to get that mindset to think that way. Because that's a, that's the hardest thing is staying in that positive mindset. You know, when you're going through these treatments and you're just feeling bad, and you know you feel maybe less of a woman sometimes. And right. um, uh, even in parenting, you're wondering what does my kids think? You know, are they embarrassed to be out in public? Because I would go bald in public. You know, you, you just kind of get used to things, mm -hmm. you know, so um, you put on a nice pair of big hoops and some lipstick and, you know, you you just have to uh, embrace what's happening because it's, it's going to happen. So, you know, embrace what's happening. Right. And you're still a beautiful person. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any long term effects from your chemotherapy? Yes. Um, the neuropathy was one thing uh, in my hands and feet from the treatment and um, my cardiologist closely watches my heart function. Um, I have a get an echocardiogram and um, uh, ultrasound every six months for my heart to make sure it's it's functioning well because chemotherapy long term does cause you know weakness of the heart muscles. I also um, get physical therapy for my neuropathy. You can get physical therapy for the hands and feet to help you. Um, learn how to handle objects. Just picking up a pen or a penny out of your purse can be a difficult thing for a person that has neuropathy in their hands. Um, so I did physical therapy for that. And physical therapy I, um, I've done for my, the lymphedema that I developed in my left arm. Um, they have different ways that you can wrap your arm to keep the swelling down. I have a compression sleeve that I wear to help keep the swelling down and a compression glove um, so those, you know, are things that um, you can get physical therapy for as well. And also uh, something called chemo brain is a, is a real thing. Um, it's something where cancer patients that go through chemotherapy long term, we have like some small memory lapses. You know, we get very forgetful and um, sometimes when I'm talking, my train of thought, you know, gets lost in, uh, in a conversation. So sometimes that makes it difficult when you're talking to somebody, especially people you don't know. Um, but that's something that you can just um, exercise your brain by, you know, playing these brain games. I play brain games on my cell phone. There's a lot of those. So just keep your mind uh, occupied and, and exercise and, you know, you'll do fine. Okay. Do you find yourself exercising more? Uh, had your eating habits changed, like the type of food you eat? I can tell you one thing, the uh, most important thing for a cancer patient is to, you know, manage your diet. Um, uh, I didn't make huge changes, but I did make a lot of changes. And, um, and exercising is very important. So even walking, because sometimes uh, cancer patients suffer, you know, we have chronic fatigue. Mm -hmm. And it may sound backwards, but exercising helps with the energy. So um, even if you just go walking, you know, it'll help you in a lot of different ways. Um, to keep your energy level up. And, um, and it, it helps with uh, depression. You know, uh, the more you sit, the more you think about the cancer and, and all the negative things that go along with it. Um, you still need to enjoy your life and keep physically in shape and, you know, just be ready for the next day. Okay. So these healthcare procedures could not be cheap. So, what type of financial challenges did you go through? Yes, um, being a cancer patient could be costly. And um, is, uh, a lot of it is due to um, loss of work or having to cut back on working hours. 
you know, um, um, or just, you know, just having to go to treatments or appointments, you know, so many times during the week. Um, that could be very challenging. And also just the, the medication, you know, as a long-term cancer survivor, you know, you end up being on a different variations of medication and um, just keeping up with prescription payments mm -hmm. and uh, your ongoing doctor's visits, co-payments, um, things you may need along the way to um, assist you around your, your home even, um, you know, could cost you some money. There are some organizations that um, can help with some of your financial needs. Uh, for instance, um, I get treated at MD Amsterdam Cancer Center and um, they have, uh, like I said, a beauty salon barbershop there and you can go in there and they'll cut your hair for free. Um, they also um, provide you with free a free wig, uh, a free head scarf. Um, those things become helpful. You know, it's not, it doesn't mean a lot to the average person, but it becomes very helpful when you're paying a lot of medical expenses. Um, also, there's organizations uh, that have lists of other places where you can get financial help. Living Beyond Breast Cancer, Metavivor, um, Susan G. Coleman, and uh, I'm sure you were going to put some of the links together to right. help assist these uh, ladies and gentlemen um, get their financial help. Also, there's organizations that will also help you um, with cleaning your home. Um, okay. Yes, they have some okay. maid services that uh, will clean just for cancer patients um, because, like I said, it is exhausting when you go through some of your treatments, uh, the fatigue and the weakness you have, and um, a lot of people have a lot of sickness. They're just, you know, they have stuff thrown up and a lot of sickness that goes along with it. So um, they need, they just need that extra help. Um, just sweeping and mopping floors could be difficult for a cancer patient. So there's a lot of organizations that will help you. Right. And I'll have that link in my description box. Okay, earlier you talked about having a mastectomy and how your husband would respond to it. Has this affected your marriage in any way? I would say in my head, it affected my marriage um, because I, uh, I would always think, you know, what does my husband think about, you know, I have a breast missing. You know, he, he'll make a joke and say, you know, I'm not a breast man or anything like that. He tries to uh, calm my thoughts down, but it, it gets hard for a woman sometimes because you just, you know, uh, you know, at first you just feel kind of less of a woman. It took me a little time to get past that and, and, and over that and just, you know, um, embrace what's going on with me now, you know. Um, during when I was first getting treatment, I would notice when my husband and I would go down the hall to uh, my departments I have to visit at the hospital, um, I would see these pamphlets on the wall and um, it would have a lot of different things on uh, um, just general if you need help with coping with stress, if you need help with financially or but I see this pamphlet that talked about uh, cancer and abuse and you know it got me to thinking you know and um, when I talked to other cancer patients you know the, the, I realized the divorce rate would get higher sometimes and uh, as um, of course, the cancer does cause a lot of financial strain, which can cause a lot of financial arguments right. <laughs> in the home. Um, so uh, we had to adjust our finances, you know, because my husband decided, you know, I shouldn't go back to work. And my doctor said I should go back to, to work, you know, because I my job was to be a, a, a cancer patient um, more days than I wanted to at first and um, to get used to my new life and the, the, the continuous treatments. And um, so um, it did cause financial strain, and uh, so it does cause tension in, in the marriage. Um, uh, our situation never got abusive, but you know, when I hear other patients, you know, sometimes different people with different sicknesses um, may have challenges with their other significant other, you know, getting stressed over mm -hmm. holding the load. You know, so that's something that cancer patients need to talk to with their significant other, and they may need to bring in some help, you know, talk to a therapist, just so you can be uh, together as a unit, because it, it, get, it gets to be stressful, and it, the cancer patient gets stressed about going to appointments and having to deal with doctors and, and procedures. That causes a lot of stress. 
that could cause stress in the marriage as well because that you may show that outward in a different way towards your right. spouse and um, those things you have to talk about you need to deal with right away and not just wait for it to get worse so we learn how to um, deal with our situation through um, counseling with therapy and you know I have a best friend you know she's good at uh, keeping us on track my best friend Teresa so um, you know family support is an important friend support uh, or counseling all that's very important to keep that uh, stress down in the household and also if you have children involved that's another stressor because you know it may be less money coming in and that's less for the children's activity so that becomes a personal stress Okay, so we've talked about the physical challenges. Now, are there some mental challenges also for cancer patients? Yes, there's a lot of mental uh, challenges for cancer patients. Um, uh, again, with the physical side, um, those physical things that's going on, the new uh, problems, the side effects from chemotherapy and some of the medications to manage the uh, problems that come along with chemotherapy. Um, that can be challenging. Um, just being a parent, parenting, because I know cancer patients that have babies, little ones, um, in school, and um, they're trying to go through their day-to-day -day life, still being that mother figure. But you know, you have the challenges of the fatigue and um, body pains and aches um, that come along with chemotherapy. Um, also. Um, there's challenges of, you know, again, of the financial. And um, I believe that cancer patients should use self-care. Um, don't forget about yourself, you know, trying to hold up the family and hold up things around the house. You still got to have self-care and take care of yourself, you know, and make sure you're you're healthy and, and strong. Especially as an uh, African-American, we have a problem of you know, just in, in past generations, we were raised to just get over, get past. Right. But um, the reality of it is you may need help. And in the black community, we have a hard time um, accepting help or seeking help through uh, a medical professional, a therapist. You know, there's nothing wrong with seeing a therapist. It um, you, You'll be surprised about the things that um, you can manage, you know, by talking it over with a therapist, because you can talk to her with your spouse or you know your children, or whatever. But sometimes it's it's you may need that outside because you don't want to put some things you know burdens on your family. So you might need that outside therapist to help you and guide you through um, sorting out these emotions and mm -hmm. and and managing the new things that's going on in your life with chemotherapy. I mean, you can still have you can have a good life if you you know get that balance. You know, you can look at the word stage four and it'll mean less to you if you get that good balance. You know, because that, to me, stage four is a number. You know, I'll, I'll be considered stage four for the rest of my life because I'll be going through treatment, treatment for the rest of my life. So what did you do to keep positive during this experience? Well, one thing, you know, you had to stay in prayer um, because, you know, a lot of my strength come through the Lord, of course. And um, I just had to look at cancer in a different way. I don't want to keep looking at it as if... Um, uh, I don't want to make cancer my life. Right. You know, um, I want to. Uh, I took my life back and just started living my life. Because a lot of times we'll start off um, just thinking about the cancer, and then you'll sit at the house, you'll sit in isolation, and um, those things, those behaviors, you have to slowly change. You know, don't let cancer do you. You do cancer. Right. <laughs> Very good. And um, so that's one thing I change. And then sometimes you need to go walk. You know, just take a walk. You know. I got this little stick, I go walking, listen to music. It's just a small thing that you can do to uh, keep your mental great and continue to live your life like you, you did before. If you went to visit friends, continue to visit your friends. Don't stop those activities because cancer came in. You're not cancer will be there, so there's nothing you can do but to go through your treatment and um, continue your life and, and push on. Good. And so what advice would you give other women that are out there and listening to you? I would tell them to um, uh, keep smelling those roses. Keep smelling those roses. Um, plan for tomorrow. Because my thing is, if you don't plan for something, 
what are you saying to yourself? So always plan for tomorrow. Um, if you want to take a vacation, plan. Do that. You know, um, but you, it's, a, it's a mindset. And you don't want to be in that mindset of isolation and, and not doing anything. So if I was you, I would just plan to do something. It don't have to be huge, just small, but plan for tomorrow. Very good. Thank you so much for viewing my video today on breast cancer awareness and Sharon, thank you so much for being my special guest today. I thank you for inviting me and I thank you for allowing me to share my story. Bye. Bye.